adding in interactivity. We've come so far in our course here together. We've seen how to create animation. We've seen how to work with movie clips and create buttons. But I want to now take some time and show you how to get your buttons to do something inside your Flash projects. So what I'm going to show you how to do in this exercise is, I think anyway, a relatively straightforward example of adding in some interactivity. It's all going to be point and click. And then in the next exercise, I want to get into something called action script. This is the coding language that sort of resides behind the scenes inside Flash. And it's a whole other side of Flash. It's a whole other world. You can do some really cool things. But to get us started, what I want to do is I want to open up our next project file. So go ahead and hit Control-O or Command-O on your keyboard and head into your project files folder. And inside your project files folder, you'll find a file called addinginteractivity.fla. Go ahead and pop this guy open. Now, I've already done all the heavy lifting inside this file. I've already set things up for us here. I want to zero in or focus on the four buttons across the top of the stage. I tried to rig this up as if it were, you know, navigation buttons inside an interface or, you know, something like that. And as I say, I've already done all the heavy lifting. Let me show you what's going on inside the library panel. If you pop into your library panel for a second, you'll see that there are two folders. Let's not worry about the folder named part two just yet. This is gonna be used in the next exercise. I wanna zero in on the part one folder. Let's twist him open. And inside there, you can see that I've created four buttons. So we have about us, contact us, home, and more training. And all I did with these guys is I created very, very simple rollovers. Once again, nothing that you haven't seen already. I'm gonna hit Control or Command Enter on my keyboard so you can see what we have here. So again, just very, very simple mouse overs or rollovers. You can see though that when I click on the buttons, nothing happens. No event is triggered, no action is triggered. So. They are indeed clickable buttons, but they don't do anything yet. And that's what I want to show you how to do is getting these buttons to do something, okay? As for the two buttons down at the bottom, let's not worry about those guys just yet. We're going to use them in the next exercise. So again, we'll just worry about these guys across the top. Now, by the way, just a really quick mention while I think of it, I created these four buttons rather quickly. What I did is I created the first button, which was home, and then what I did inside the properties panel is I right clicked on this guy and chose duplicate and then renamed him to about us. And then I simply changed the text and then duplicated him and moved on to the next one, duplicated him and moved on to the last one. So you can actually build out a navigation menu or a set of navigation buttons fairly quickly just by duplicating your symbols inside the library. Pretty cool. Okay. Now, as I say, this is going to be a, a more straightforward example of adding in some interactivity. What I'm going to do is I want to set it up so that when someone clicks on more training, they're taken to a location online. In other words, they're going to be taken to a specific URL online. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and select this guy for now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to head into my code snippets panel. You can hit your window menu and look for code snippets or click on this icon here inside the Flash interface, if you happen to have this guy handy. And of course, we have all of these subfolders inside the code snippets panel. You may want to spend a moment touring through what we have available. So for instance, underneath actions, we have things like play a movie clip, stop a movie clip, show an object, click to position an object, simple timer, all kinds of great stuff. Inside timeline navigation, stop at this frame, click to go to a previous frame and stop, click to go to the next scene and play. So you can go to another scene inside your movie, which is pretty cool. And you know what's interesting about the code snippets, by the way, is the further down inside the panel we get, the more complex things get. For instance, down about well, just above halfway, we can get into loading and unloading content, which is really cool. At about the halfway mark, we can start controlling audio and video, which is really cool. And then down towards the bottom, we have a whole set of mobile options. If you want to get into mobile touch events, tap events, long press events, all kinds of stuff, mobile gesture events, right? So if you're using Flash to create mobile content 
or even content for Adobe Air, I mean, you can really do some cool things here, right? In any regard, what I'm going to do is I'm going to head to Actions, and it's the very first guy underneath Actions, click to go to a web page. This is the guy that I'm after, okay? Now, over on the right-hand side, I get the pair of icons. I'm going to click on the first guy here, Show Description, and this, of course, gives us an idea of what's going to happen. Clicking on the specified object loads the URL inside a new browser window. Okay, wonderful. I'm going to click on the next guy here, Show Code, and this is our action script, okay? So this is the action script code that's going to get loaded into the sort of the behind the scenes, if you will, of your movie. And what's interesting too is there's actually some instructions here. Instructions, replace adobe.com with the desired URL address, keep the quotation marks. So if I scroll down a little bit, we'll see inside the code, there's a URL, which by default, is going to take us to adobe.com, okay? Now, here's something interesting. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on insert. I'm going to say, yeah, when people click on more training, I want them to go to this URL. I'm going to go ahead and click on insert, and we get this message here, sort of this warning. It says, you must replace instance name here before you can insert. Click and drag on instance name here to choose an instance on the stage. What the heck are they talking about? All of a sudden, things have kind of taken a left-hand turn. Instance names? What are we talking about here? Well, what we have here is we have symbol instances sitting on the stage. These are all button instances, right? And when we start adding in interactivity with these instances, we need to target the specific instances. How do we do that? Well, what we would do is we would give each instance a unique identifier, a unique name. Okay, so it's telling me here to click and drag on instance name here to choose an instance on the stage. They're referring to this blue text here. You might have to scroll up just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and click and drag on this guy and check it out. I now have this little sort of this harpoon, if you will, this little target. And I'm going to target the more training button. And as soon as I let go, it's prompting me for an instance name. Now, they've thrown in a default name here, button one. I could leave that. That would be fine. Or maybe I could type in something like more training. That would be fine. Whatever you want. Or nav button three, because it's the third button inside my nav menu. Really, whatever you want. Okay? I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. All right. That should do the job for me. I'm going to go ahead and click on insert one more time. And notice now that the code snippet has been inserted onto the actions layer inside the timeline. And inside the first frame of the actions layer, we have an empty keyframe with a tiny lowercase a. You can barely see it there. The lowercase a tells us that we have some action script inside that frame. Okay? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pause things up. And I want to show you how we can work more directly with the action script. And of course, we also want to test our button to see if it actually takes us to a URL. Let's do that in the next exercise.